Good morning and happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter. This is Called Out Christian Ministries from El Paso, Texas. We're giving everyone and speaking to everyone and saying, God bless you on this beautiful Sunday. Yes, he rose. Christ rose for us. He did not stay in the grave. I want you to, to open up with me Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. It says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I pray the newness of life is upon you, upon me forevermore in Jesus' name. That spirit of newness will never depart from us. We will never let it go. What you believe is what you receive. Believe in newness starting from today. We thank every one of us and you all for joining us in worship today. We believe that you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Once again, this is Called Out Christian Ministries, El Paso, Texas. We're located at 1317 East Missouri Avenue. Of course, due to the situation, we are actually giving you this ministry into the Lord's service online. So we ask you to join us Sunday to Sunday at 10 a.m. as we bring the message to you. Hallelujah. This too shall pass in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to also um, thank you all for um, joining us on the platform of our Instagram. We ask you to follow us there too for updated information. Just want to let you all know that we do continue with um, our Bible studies and prayer on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we hope that you are also doing that in your individual homes. We are finishing the book of Hebrews. We are on chapter 12, and by the grace of God, we'll be finishing up that soon. And I'm believing that your faith has built up more than ever before. What a timely um, um, opportunity to go through the books of Hebrews. Hallelujah. Amen. We also have a WhatsApp group set up. If you would like to be a part of the WhatsApp group, just give us an email um, saying that you would like to be a part of our WhatsApp group so we can send you information from time to time. And also, it's a good way for you to send us your prayer request. We are praying for loved ones, families, those we know, those we don't know, we are praying. If you send us a prayer request, we will pray for you and God Almighty will answer. Amen. <clears throat> Our monthly focus, of course, this beautiful month of April. Yes, the world calls it April. We also name it Judah. Judah means we praise the Lord. I'm telling you, it's not a coincidence. Everything is in place by God Almighty. If there's ever a time before that you thought about praising the Lord Jesus, it's this time. And beautifully, this month of Judah, we will praise the Almighty King starting now and forevermore, like never before in Jesus' name. Amen. The monthly focus is the king is coming. You know, some people will listen to that title and think, oh, are they saying that the king is coming right now? Are they predicting this is the day? The king is coming to your situation, to my situation. I am a living testimony. The king is coming. He's coming back for, a, for his glorious bride but he already had sent information ahead that even in your situation stay with me I am going to come back for you so I want you to listen to the message that Pastor Tolu Akinjaiju has for all of us um, through the Lord God Almighty which he has deposited into him and I am believing it will bless you in Jesus name amen however however I want you to know that you know there's something about reputation. And you know, everyone has a reputation, but I'm telling you, God's reputation is the best. It's impeccable. It, can, it is not blemished, it is not stained. So God is telling you and I that I have spoken it in my word. Have no fear, have no fear. Once you have destroyed the spirit of worldly fear, then you have conquered everything else. 
every blessing, every spiritual blessing will now come upon you. The spirit of life, the spirit of newness, to move on, to believe that I am not going to die. I will live the, to declare the glory of God. I have seen that and I am a living testimony and I believe you are too and you will testify of the goodness of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. If we have any other announcements, I will leave that to Pastor Tolu Akinjaiju. I greet you from Called Out Christian Ministries. My name is Pastor Banke Akinjaiju. Glory be to God. Blessed morning, church. The call to worship for today will be found at John chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew, not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his holy word. Happy Resurrection Sunday.
for the cross. Where would we be without the cross? Where would you and I be without the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ? There's so much about the cross. It's the pivotal thing that had to happen for everything that we receive in Jesus Christ. He had to go to the cross. He had to die. And he rose again. Hallelujah. So I say this morning, blessed Resurrection Day, brothers and sisters. Feliz Dia de Pascua. Feliz Dia de Resurrection. Amen. That reason Christ will do a great and mighty work in your life, in my life, in the lives of our loved ones in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm very, very excited today I'm very excited about the service today I'm excited about Easter it's such a great time in our lives it's such a it's 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 such an important event in the lives of man I say man period man for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. So Easter is really for mankind. It's for every one of us. But even more so for those of us. That call Jesus Christ Lord. So I'm very excited. I'm very pumped. And I. And I'm, uh, and I'm greeting you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. And I pray that you have a blessed, blessed resurrection day in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's go into the word this morning. Um, and let's go into it uh, with prayer uh, as we go into the word. So please forgive me. You will see me kneel down. So you'll just see the top of my head briefly as I pray. And then we'll continue in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we honor you again. We bow before you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We bow. We don't just bow physically, we bow our hearts. We bow to the great and mighty God. We bow to your expression of love. Love so amazing. Love so divine. You love us so much that you took the ignominy of the cross. You love us so much that you went through the shame of the cross. You love us so much that you went through the suffering, the abuse. Oh, Father, how we appreciate you today. And so, Lord God, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for that word that you have laid upon my heart to share with your people today. Oh, Father, I thank you that you will take this word and you will send it forth and that your word will have a place in our hearts, in our lives, in the name of Jesus. That, Father, distance will not be a hindrance to this word. This word will go forth and accomplish that to which you send it. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word brings light. 
It brings understanding to the simple. Father, send your light. Send your light into every heart. Send your light into every mind. Send your light, O oh God, into every household. Send your light, O oh God, into every dark place in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the light that shone forth on that day of resurrection, let that light fill every home, fill every heart, fill every person that is viewing this now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we honor you so very much. Take all the honor and glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. We're just a vessel and nothing more. And when you're done, Lord, please come and take the glory. We're satisfied. Just to see you glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a Hebrew tradition during Passover. Interestingly, Passover is really um, a way that you can... It's, it's, it's what we kind of call Easter now. And uh, during that Passover tradition, the elder in the home will take a part of the Passover bread and break a part. Listen to this. And will take a linen napkin, a fold, and will fold it neatly and will put that broken, broken, Passover bread in the middle and then they will go and hide it somewhere and then the children they will start looking for it and when they find it to them they rejoice they are happy and for some they say that it means that the Messiah is coming. I don't know all the implications of that and I don't know how to relate all that to the linen folds that Jesus Christ um, that was at his tomb. There are so many inferences that it's, it's a sign that the Messiah is coming. There are, so, there are so many inferences about that linen cloth folded, the one of his body there laying down, and the one by his head, neatly folded by the head. There's so much theory on the internet about that, but I am not going to focus on that today. What I'm going to focus on is that it tells me that his body is no longer there. He is free. He is alive. And he's alive forevermore. And so, today, this morning, let me share with you in our series, The King is Coming. I would love to share with you on the power of his resurrection. On the power of of his resurrection. Let me take my two anchor passages from <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 21. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. And he says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 
And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? Watch this. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality, all problems, all sorrow, all shame, all sickness, all attacks, all cancers, all diseases, all diabetes, all coronavirus infections, far above all principality and power. 21, please. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Hallelujah. And then, one other scripture. The scripture is found in Philippians chapter 3. And it's only one verse, verse 10. And it's actually the first part of it that I really want to focus on today. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. <clears throat> and if you're watching at home, I hope you have your Bibles, I hope you have your iPhone, iPad, or phone, whatever kind of phone it is. But I hope you've got your Bible in front of you and you're following with me. And so I would love for you to read this with me. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's it. That's, that's what I really want to fo focus on today. So, the power of his resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> In John chapter 19, from about verse 31 to 37, uh, we read that um, in John 19, verses 31 to 37, we read that um, Peter and John, after Mary Magdalene came and told them that, hey, she can't find the Lord. They ran to the tomb. They ran to that tomb. And we read that um, as they were running, uh, the beloved disciple, the disciple whom Jesus loved, and whom I believe is John, okay? And I will refer to him as John uh, as we, uh, subsequently. Um, outran Peter. When he outran Peter, the Bible said he got to the door of the tomb and he stopped by the door. And when he stopped at the door, all he did was um, he just, um, uh, he, he, he stayed there. And in staying there, he, um, he stayed by the door and Peter came. When Peter now came, Peter came in and went into the tomb itself. And the Bible says that Peter saw. And what did they see? They saw an empty tomb. And in that tomb they saw this linen cloth that marked the wrapping of the body of Christ. Okay, and then they saw the part where the napkin that was for his head, they saw it folded neatly. And John entered with him. And the Bible says something very interesting there, that John entered and believed. Now, I want to take us back to John 19 in verses 31 to 37. There is a part there that talks about John believing something. Let's look at it. John saw, hmm, in verse 35, verse 35, uh, let me read from 31. Let me read it. Let me read it from 31 all the way to 37, and then you'll see where I'm going there. Hallelujah. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers, and they break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. 
Okay? But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. Okay? But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bore record. And his record is true. And he knows that he saith true that you might believe. See, that's really where I was going, that verse 35, that John saw and he's saying that what I'm writing is true and I'm writing it so that you believe. Why is it important? It's important because he wants to prove to you that Jesus died. He wants to prove that I'm really telling you that Jesus died. Okay, so that's really what I wanted to bring out there, that Jesus was dead. Jesus was not, as some people nowadays, uh, instigators have been saying, he was uh, in a coma, he was swooning, or whatever. Jesus died. Hallelujah. Now, fast forward to John 20. In John 20, when they got there to that tomb, in verse 8, John 20 and verse 8. Let's look at John 20 and verse 8. It says, Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. <laughs> he saw and he believed. What did he see? He saw an empty tomb. Hallelujah. And he believed. What did he see? He saw the linen cloth that they had used to put spice on Jesus and wrap his body tight. So that unless somebody comes to cut it and cut it in pieces before that body can escape. He saw those linen cloth. He did not need to see Jesus. He believed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Now, we can say, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. Though those linen wrappings had been like bands of captivity, things that bound him to the grave, glory to God, he unbound himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of the power that raised him that we talked about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. That mighty power that raised him. That mighty power that says, Satan, you cannot hold this one down. That mighty power that raised him. <clears throat> if at Jesus' weakest, to me, that was the weakest point. Maybe Saturday. Hmm. Maybe Friday, maybe Saturday was the weakest that you could say Jesus was ever at. And yet, if at his weakest, he can still come rise up and destroy the works of Satan and say, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Mock them. If he can say that, then, and comfort in the newness of life and power. Imagine with me, my brothers and sisters, that you're watching me, you're listening to me. What is it that is too difficult for him to accomplish now in your life, in my life? Hallelujah. Is it to heal those who are sick with the coronavirus? Is it to heal those who are on the ventilators right now? Is it to protect his children from the coronavirus? Hallelujah. John chapter 1, I believe verse 12 says, For as many as believe in him, to them gave he what? That power of resurrection. Hallelujah. For as many as believe him, to them gave he power to become the children of God. Thank you, Jesus. And so today, I want to look at the benefits of the power of his resurrection. I want us to look at the benefits. One thing I want us to remember is this. <laughs> Mark 14 verse 50 tells us that everybody at a time left Jesus. 
At the time, everybody left him. I don't know where Mary's mother was at. <laughs> I don't know. They left him. For the Bible says in Mark chapter 14, verse 50, and they all forsook him and fled. They all forsook him and fled. They ran away. They, 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 they ran away from him. Peter denied him, ran away. Even John, 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 they all forsook him and fled. But when he started to appear to them after the resurrection, ha, huh, these people that the Bible said they were shot down, they were hiding away. In fact, the way they were was, it was a lockdown. It was coronavirus times 20 million times. It was a lockdown. They were all hiding. Everybody hiding because they believed that their leader was gone and the Pharisees were coming after them. They all forsook and fled. But when he appeared to them, something changed in their lives. May something change in your life today as the Lord appears to you light, brighter, clearer in the name of Jesus Christ. They believed. They believed. Family, they believe. I tell you, I'm so excited about this message today. The Lord will do something in our lives, in my life, in your life, in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Remind, a reminder, these are the same as apostles who ran away. These apostles now are ready to die for Jesus Christ. First, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 6. Even tells us that 500 people at a time, they saw Jesus Christ. He appeared to them. So this is not hallucination. Somebody, one person can say, I am hallucinating. I drank uh, Corona, God forbid. You won't drink Corona, uh, the beer. They drank something. They got drunk. They were hallucinating. No. 500 people saw him. And as at the time of that writing, the Bible says, of which most of them are still alive. Hallelujah. Let's read it. After that, he was seen of above. It's not even 500. Above 500. So this is not hearsay. Jesus really rose again of whom the greater part remain unto this present. As he was writing that time, as he was writing, there were people that still remember. We saw him. We are part of the 500 that he appeared to. Hallelujah. So don't let any professor come and confuse you. Don't let any philosopher come and bamboozle you. Don't let any atheist come and, come and question your resurrected God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hmm. And what is the most beautiful part of that? Is that we never heard that one person ever recounted their story. Is the, it, for me, is the biggest proof. Not one ever came back and said, you know what? Initially I said this, but you know, mm -mm, I'm no longer sure. Hallelujah. Uh, it reminds me of a story in, in, in 1300s in Bohemia. Bohemia used to be mostly a part of Czech, Czechoslovakia. Uh, and, and there was a man there. His name was John Huss. John Huss was one of those that started the Reformation, the, the Protestant belief that what the Catholic Church was doing was wrong and all that. You know what? He had a, a protege whose name was Jerome. And these guys supported him so much. They were both preaching and proclaiming that let's follow the Bible, not what the Catholic Church was saying. Okay, I don't have any problems with the Catholic Church. I'm just telling a true fact of, I'm just going back to a true history and talking about it. And, and, and eventually they killed John Huss. They burnt him. They put him, set him on fire. A year later, they carried Jerome. 
They said, you, you were the one also supporting him and all that. Do you agree to what John Huss was doing and all that? And Jerome said, no, I don't. He denied. But you know what? Glory to God. You know what? The next day, Jerome went back to his room and said, no, 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 no. No, no, whatever you like, you can do to me. I, do, I believe, I saw, I know what happened. You can burn me if you want to burn me also. You can do whatever. And do you know what? They burnt Jerome. And up until he was burnt, he continued to confess that the Bible is the word of God. What John Huss was doing was true. It's the same thing. These apostles, all of them, all of them, they were ready to die for Jesus Christ. Every one of them were ready to stay on what they heard. Uh, Peter, Peter said up to the point of death. He's, even they said, he said, don't crucify me the way you crucify the Lord. Crucify me upside down because I know what I believe. Hallelujah. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. Hallelujah. All these people were ready to die for what they saw. Even he appeared to Paul. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And I'm sure even in the world right now, he has appeared to many people, showing himself. We have heard stories of him appearing even in Saudi Arabia to people there, showing himself the, the risen Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So, benefits of the power of his resurrection. Number one, I'll have about seven or eight for us. One, realize, you realize that all power lies in Jesus Christ. All power. All power lies in Jesus Christ. I hope you will write these things down and go back to it. And when the challenges of life come, you will go back to it. You will go back to it and you say, the power of resurrection must work in my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Matthew 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus says in Matthew 28, verse 18. He says, all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. <laughs> I love it. All power. All power. Coronavirus power. Diabetes power. Bankruptcy power. Financial issues power. Marital power. Mm -hmm. Settlement power. Mm -hmm. Prosperity power. Whatever it is. All power is given unto me. Now, look at Revelation 5, verse 12. Let, let's, let's go all the way to the last book. Revelation 5, 12. And see, see this power there. Come on, give that to us. Saying, people were saying in, in heaven with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was crucified, who rose again to receive what? Power. Riches. Wisdom. Strength, honor, glory, blessing, sevenfold blessings. Seven. All belong to Jesus. All power 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 belong to Him. Hallelujah. I, ho I hope somebody is excited with me today. Hallelujah. Number two. Because of the power of his resurrection, our righteousness is a done deal. <laughs> because of the power of resurrection, we have the righteousness of God. This man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Our righteousness is a finished one. In Romans chapter 4, 
The Bible said concerning Abraham, it was imputed, he believed, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. But I want to tell you something, but it was not just him alone. It was not just him alone, but every one of us who believes in his resurrection. Come on. Look at Romans chapter 4, verse 22. And reading forward, Romans chapter 4 and verse 22. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Next. Now it was not written for his sake alone. Do you see that? It was not just for Abraham alone. Do you see that? It was not just for Abraham alone that it was imputed to him. Go on, go on. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed. If we do what? If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. You see that? If we have that belief in the power of resurrection, then that righteousness comes to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification, for our righteousness. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. The proof is because he is seated at the right hand of God. The Father endorsed his claim by raising him from the dead. So we are also justified by his death and resurrection. We have peace with God. Whosoever believeth in Jesus Christ is as free from the guilt of sin as Christ is. Thank you, Father. Our Lord Jesus took the sin of his people and he died in our place. So now that he himself is free, we are free. Oh yes, John 8, 36 says, And he whom the Son of God has set free, he is what? Free indeed. Hallelujah. John 8, 36. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, media, you're doing fantastic today, man. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Number three. <clears throat> when we believe in Jesus... When you believe in the resurrection, you receive a new life and you rise to a higher state. You receive a spiritual life. Yes, you have it. Jesus Christ says in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. You see, he put both together. I am the resurrection and the life. I am your stand, standing up. Is resurrection and recovery is life. I am. I am your arise and shine. For your light, for your life has come. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. You see that? Thank you, Jesus. If you have Jesus Christ, you have the resurrection. Oh, family, that we might realize what power lies in him, Jesus Christ. That he is the resurrection and the life. All the power there is in Christ is there for us, his people. We need to start growing in that knowledge that there's, that there's power in us. Hallelujah. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. I love it. Colossians 1.19. And of his fullness have we all received. John 1.16. John 1.16. Of his fullness. See, see that. See that. We're linking scriptures with scriptures. It pleased the Father that in him all fullness dwell. In Jesus Christ. Okay? That's Colossians. One, uh, Colossians 1.19. And then, and then, in him dwell all that fullness. Of his fullness have we all received. John 1 16, comparing scriptures with scriptures. Hallelujah. It means there is tremendous power at our disposal. We don't use it enough. We don't use it enough. Many people are mocking the church right now about miracles and healing. Oh, yes. I, but I, you see, I see it as mischievous foolishness. Really. Uh, they are mocking the church now that, okay, so didn't the church know about coronavirus? Did you kind of, did I even saw one where I, I, I felt so, so grieved in my spirit, where they had pictures of some men of God and they say, saying, all oh, these people that claim miracles and healings and all that, why can't they begin just heal people now from the coronavirus and all that? 
It's mischievous foolishness. It's, it's ignorance of the highest order. <laughs> Was Apostle Peter false? So why couldn't he save himself, Apostle Peter? He was killed, crucified upside down. So was he false? Paul. Paul had something going on in his life that he prayed and God did not heal it. In fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 20, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 20, yeah, let's pull that up. But before we even go to that, he even told Timothy, and I'm sure he's prayed so many times for Timothy, after a while he said, use some wine for your stomach problem. He couldn't heal him. That's the Paul that healed Eutychus, that fell down, that raised him up. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20, Paul was talking about his companions in the ministry. And he talked about a man called Trophimus. He said, I left Trophimus. I left Trophimus in Miletus sick. I left him there, still sick. It's mischievous foolishness. It does not mean that when a man of God, a woman of God fails in, 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 in raising somebody, in healing somebody, it means that they, have, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are charlatans, that they don't know what they're doing. No, it is not them. It is God that heals. It is God that decides to heal. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Elisha had a sickness, the Bible says, from which he would die. That's Elisha that performed marvelous miracles. And what about our Lord Jesus Christ? Wasn't he killed? Hmm. The only thing is that preachers should not be arrogant. Pastors should not, prophets should not say what they've not seen. But we all need to trust in God. Number four, because of his resurrection power, you have the Holy Spirit enabling you because of his resurrection power. The Holy Spirit enables you. (sighs) Because of the power of his resurrection, the Holy Spirit enables you. In John 20, verse 21, And 22. In John 20, verse 21 and 22, he said, Then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Now look at verse 22. Verse 22. Okay. Uh, Verse 22 goes like this. And he breathed. On them, after he has said this, receive the Holy Spirit. You see that? Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, the power of resurrection, allows you to receive the Holy Spirit. Allows the Holy Spirit to walk in your life. It reminds me of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord breathed into man's nostril. And man became a living being. Hallelujah. So God is giving you the grace to set captives free as a child of God. You know, you don't have to be a pastor. A child of God is here to just speak the word of God. Speak word of freedom. Word of the love of God. Word of life. Not all the negativities. Not to manipulate the word of God to embezzle, do people. Uh -uh. We're not talking about that. But speak life. Use the word of God to bring hope, to bring peace, to bring joy. Not for lucre, not for filthy lucre, not for money, not for pride, not for fame of this world, but to glorify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. He's, <laughs> he's for example, right now, he's the one that is the Holy Spirit, the power of re- his resurrection. The Holy Spirit is the one that's enabling me to speak this word now. He's the one that's enabling me to teach this word now. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Father. It flows through you. It takes the things of clay, your jar of clay, and breathes life into it to have meaning. So yes, some may object to it. You can be someone that says, I pray that the Lord will release his grace and anointing upon people's life. Amen? I pray that the spirit of fear and anxiety will not overcome you, but rather you overcome it with love, power, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. It will not overcome you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It must all be according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, when he raised him from the dead. May his resurrection power lift you above evil today. Lift you above shame. Lift you above every negative pictures, every negative news that they are carrying online, on Facebook, on Instagram, on CNN, on Fox News, and every other news, whatever they call those news, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May his power of resurrection oh, <laughs> give you a vigorous life, a life that is abundant, not a timid life, not a sorrowful life, not a confused life, not a locked down life. In the name of Jesus, we walk majestically in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. May his resurrection power lift you and me above every evil influences, above every coronavirus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Number five, the power of resurrection gives you sound mind. Mm. Intellectual abilities are refined. Gabo Shata Lebro Gedus. I know one, one wonderful sister. Never knew anything about medicine. Came to this country and glory to God. God just opened a new chapter in her brain. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Luke 24, verse 45. Luke 24 and verse 45. Thank you, Father. Watch this. <laughs> this is what he did for them when he resurrected. Can you go to the previous verse, please, real quick? Let me see. Huh. See? He said, these are the things I've been speaking to you while I was yet with you. You see, sometimes I see Jesus. I, I feel like Jesus is like... You see, if Jesus that lived with these people, that, that they saw him for three and a half years, they ate with him, they slept with him, they did everything, they saw all the miracles live, not, not on TV, not on story, they saw it live. They were there. They ate with him. They saw the 5,000 being fed and all that. If Jesus can keep repeating, I tell you, believe me, then I know there's a reason why we have to keep repeating these things. We have to keep getting, because there's something that blocks the mind of man from believing. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is revelation, family. We're talking revelation. When you have revelation, that's when you move in a way that it, is, it, it can be against the way everybody is going. It will look weird. You will look strange. You will be doing things, people will be mocking, but you have the revelation from God. <laughs> They are washed, they are purged by the washing of the water of the word. New spiritual abilities are released when you believe in the power of his resurrection. You are given a new heart and a right spirit. Hallelujah. A spirit that hates the things of the enemy, that hates wickedness, racism, infidelity, fornication, pride, arrogance. These are the way God, this, when I'm getting ready, this is the thing, the way God puts this on, on my mind. So I start writing them down. I don't want to forget. Because I know as I'm saying that God is cutting some things down. God is dealing with certain things in people's lives. These are all in the resurrection power. We are working for our Lord. Hallelujah. We find rest in him. 
Why? He confers on us his sound mind and righteousness. Thank you, Father. You know what, family? In John chapter, in John chapter 20, in John chapter 20 and verse 22, he says, and when he has said this, he breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Spirit. And my scripture tells me in Romans 8 verse 11, that if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body, your brain cells, will quicken your heart, will quicken your cells, will quicken your immune cells, your immune level, will quicken it. If the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ, if that spirit dwells in you, will quicken your mortal body, will quicken it. It will quicken it. It will quicken it. It will be the things you were not able to understand before. He will open your understanding to understand it. Hallelujah. The things you were not able to do, he, he will help you to do it. He will give you youthfulness. He will make you stronger. He will make you healthier. Now, you have to do your part. You have to study to have that sound ability. You have to exercise to have that strength. You have to eat better, healthier. To have that youthfulness. You need to do those part. So we're not just preaching uh, anything bogus here. Balance message. But if that spirit is the primary thing. That's the first thing. The above all. And we see it. The spirit of just men made perfect. We see it. We see it. If you have discernment. Look at some godly men and women of God. Just watch them. Watch their life. Watch them. Physically watch the things. A 78 year old with sharp mind. 78 year old with no glasses. I'm not talking LASIK. Not people that have done LASIK. Hallelujah. You see them working for God. Working. Many of them 16 hours. 20 hours a day. Sometimes. Because if the spirit... Of him that raised Jesus Christ dwells in you. Then that spirit will quicken your own mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I believe it, friends. I believe it. And I keep walking towards that. I, I, I keep walking towards that. And you know what? The path of the just is like a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter. The more you see it, when you see it, when you discern it in people, when you discern it in godly men and women, and you see it, and you tap into it, the more you tap into it, the more God will do it in your lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Number six, hope. The power of resurrection gives hope. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 11 says, We don't sorrow like everybody sorrows. We don't sorrow like those that don't have hope. We don't. We don't sorrow like those that do not have hope. We are people that... We have hope. You cannot take my hope from me. He says, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. Hallelujah. We have hope. We believe in Jesus. We believe in resurrection. So if you believe in resurrection, you will have hope. We know where the souls of the godly ones that are departed are. They are forever with the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And finally, number seven. There's so much that we can take. I, and a lot of the things I've talked about, I've talked about healing. I've talked about peace. And some things I have not even just mentioned specifically, but if you were paying attention, I've talked about those things. It gives you peace of mind. Even in trouble waters, it gives you peace of mind. Hallelujah. 
he gives you peace of mind because you, why? You know that the power of resurrection is working in, for you, in you, through you. You know it. You know it. Thank you, Father. Number seven. Our God will be glorified. If you believe in the power of resurrection, our God will be glorified. Resurrection shows that God will be praised. Whether the devil likes it or not, God will be praised. He will be glorified. Whether the world likes it or not, the name of the Lord shall be praised. Whether the devil likes it or not, Jehovah must be praised. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, it says that, um, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. As the waters cover the sea. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5, Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5, we, we read that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. There are many Christians. They act holy. They speak holy. In fact, they eat holy. They drink holy. But they are struggling with so many things in their lives. You can tell that they are not an embodiment of the grace of the power of God, of the power of his resurrection. They are people that are dealing with the form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. You see that? The power of resurrection, the power that is in the... Re they, they, oh yeah, resurrection, I believe it, yes, but the power of it. The power of it. I'm, gonna, I'm helping somebody here today. Hallelujah. Mm. They think it is only for when Jesus comes back to take them home. They forget it is also for now. For setting captives free. For building up the people of God. For using to break addiction to pornography. Masturbation. Mm. For using to break the drinking problem. Spouse abuse problems, stealing problem. They go to church on Sunday. They look all respectable, very well dressed. Everything looking good. But they are struggling secretly with homosexual tendencies. They never trust God for any miracle. They talk about God's power and faith, but they never once act on it. When they see people that act on it, they mock them. They say they are liberal Christians. They complain that Jesus healed on the Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. They complain that Jesus used spit and made mud to he open somebody's eyes. As it was in those days, so it is today. So it is today. While God wants us to experience his glory and his power. <sighs> I am like... You know that story of that man in John chapter 8. That man said, if he's a sinner or not, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that I was blind and now I can see. There are Christians who just go through the motions. They've read all the apologetic books. They've read all the books. They have all the answers. They can argue whatever in the Bible with you, but they don't know the power of his resurrection. You never see any miracle in their lives. You never see God do anything. Everything is by their own labor. Mm. They are very moral. They are very religious. But they don't know the power. Oh yes. We need to be Christians that are conservative. We need to be prim and proper. I have no problem with that. But they never break down in worship. You never see them get lost in his presence while they're worshiping this God. In fact, when they are worshiping the God, they have one hand in their pocket, the other one around their spouse and stroking the back of their spouse, praising that God. 
Yes. Mm. They are not enthusiastic. They are only content with the name and the truth, but the power, the force of it is absent in their lives. They complain about praying the word of God, yet they are bogged down with the same problems that unbelievers are bogged down with. They, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, 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 they are struggling. Their children, their home is in disarray. They, many of them are five times divorced, three times divorced. No! I believe in vibrant Christians. I believe in Christians that are, are in, on, in, in, on fervor for God. We are not unruly. No. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. We are not unruly. We're not, we're not people that are disorderly. No, there is order in God. But, <laughs> oh, family, we are excited about him. We are excited to believe everything in his word. We are excited to believe everything we read in his word. We are not so sophisticated. We are not so fantastically well-read to believe that some promise in the Bible is exclusively for Israel. The one is only in the Old Testament. I don't know who put these things in people's head. If it's in the word of God and God wants me to know it. Ah! If it gives me revelation, if it's for Israel or not. Am I not Israel? I miss Israel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Where did people get that from? God's word is one. If he healed Lazarus before, he can do it again. Yes? But has he done it? But no, but has, has, he, has he used me to raise somebody yet? No, but do you think that's going to stop me from ever believing and praying? It will never. Because if he has done it before, he can and he will do it again. That's the kind of Christian we are. God's name must be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. My desire is to be a channel to allow the resurrection power to walk in me. To set the dead Lazarus free. Hallelujah. Where is that Lazarus today? Where is that Lazarus? Something dead? You're dead in something? Where is that Lazarus? I'm calling you out this morning. I'm calling you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm calling your Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Someone listening to me, you're dead in sins. You are dead in your faith. Your faith is a cold one at best, maybe lukewarm. It is dead, non-existent. I call you forth now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He that said, I am the resurrection and the life. In John eleven twenty-five. 25. Uh, yes, and this is what we keep using. And thank God, we, we may not be... The greatest miracle worker yet. No, but we've seen some. We've seen some. His, uh, Jose Alfredo. We've seen some. Sister Bernadette. We've seen some. Sister Rosa Job came into the church pain, leg, hurting, everything. With God healed in that church. Ah, Thank you, Jesus. Sister Bernadette, I can still not, I still can't believe it. I still can't wrap my head against, around it. Woman that was bent like this for years. We saw her at least for about a week or two weeks. Straight, ramrod straight. At the power of the resurrection of God. Of God. In my, 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 my brother, uh, Dr. Mayowa, power of resurrection. We're saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Pain in his arm disappeared. Well, my own personal life, my wife, stage four, stage four, three years ago now, and the Lord has healed her. Hallelujah. So don't tell me that God does not perform miracles. You, because you have not seen the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Our God is very much alive. Our God is very much available. So where is that Lazarus today? Call him. Call him now. 
Hallelujah. God help us by your grace to know the resurrection powers of the world to come. For Jesus' sake. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want us to take two or three prayers and we'll take communion. It's Resurrection Sunday. We have to take communion. So let me tell you this. Get your communion ready quickly. Get it ready. You get your communion ready. We'll pray first and then we'll take communion. But get your communion ready. Bread and some juice or water. Whatever you have. It's okay. Bread or juice and some water or water. And we'll take it. But we'll, we'll get to that shortly. But I want us to pray. Two or three prayers. Quickly. Okay. From some of the scriptures God has given us today. John 11 verse 25. John 11 and verse 25. Thank you, Father. Lord, we worship you. Jesus said unto Tolu, Jesus is saying to you, put your name there. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though some things were dead in your life, things that should rise, things that should live, though they were dead, yet they will live. I want you to pray. Lord, you are my resurrection. You are my life. Father, raise me. Raise me. Raise me up. Breathe your life into me. Breathe your life. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, health-wise, in every area. Every area. In the ministry. Whatever the area. In my home, over my children. Breathe your life. Life. The resurrection and the life. I see the resurrection and the life coming on somebody. I see it coming on someone. I see it coming into somebody's home. I see the resurrection and the life coming now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Geboshe telebrosh. Rebo gada gada. Sata lebrosh. Mesoto brokoto lebosh. Ambares. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. John 20 and verse 21. John 20 and verse 21. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John 20 and verse 21. Thank you, Father. Then said Jesus to them again. Our Lord is talking a lot today. It's been Jesus said. Jesus said all day today. Glory. There's nothing better than that. Hallelujah. Then said Jesus to them again. Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Peace be unto you. I want to tell you peace. I want you to release peace. I'm releasing peace over you, over your family, over your children, over this situation. Peace. We're speaking the peace of God right now over every situation, over all that is going on. It's peace of God. Peace. Peace. Peace of God. Peace of God around our homes. Peace of God around our family. Peace of God. Peace of God. Coronavirus, you cannot take our peace. Peace of God over our church members. We call you all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm celebrating Resurrection Sunday with you. The peace of God. The peace of God comes to your home, comes over your family, comes over your health in the name of Jesus. Receive his peace. Not fear. Not fear. Not fear. Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And finally, Philippians 3 and verse 10. Philippians 3 and verse 10. Philippians 3 and verse 10. Ah, that I may know him. That, that should be our prayer, our heart's desire. That we may know him. That we can understand. You, you see, he, he kept saying, these are the things I was telling you while I was with you. I, I've been telling you these things. You remember there was a time when he said, have I been with you this long and you still don't know me? When you see me, you know the father. He has told them this. He keeps telling. So I, I, that we may know him. I want this to be your prayer. And that you will know the power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Lord, I pray. I really want to know you more. 
There's something. The spirit of just men made perfect. There's something you that about your power of resurrection. Lord God, I need the revelation in my life. I need the understanding. I need the power to walk in me. I don't want to profess a form of godliness and not taste the power. I want both. I want the form. I want the power. Jesus, you are the wisdom and the power of God. I need you. I want you for me, for my wife, for my children, for my home, for my loved ones, for the, our congregation, for all our members, uh, for those that are listening to us online. The power of his resurrection uh, to flow in our lives that uh, we will know you. His revelation knowledge. Uh, Lord God, revelation, not just reading in the book, not just mental ascent, but something that clicks with my spirit, that I see it. The power of your resurrection. Lord, do that. And Father, we release that power of your resurrection. We release it all over the world right now. We release it here in El Paso. We release it over those that are on the ventilators. We release it over those that are in ICU. We release it over those that are recovering from COVID-19. We release it over those that have been healed. They will not fall sick again. We release it over all of us that have not gotten it. It will not come near us in the name of of Jesus. We release it over Texas. We release it over the United States. Uh, thank you, Father. You are the Passover power. Your Passover is here. Father, it is time for this virus to disappear. Arise, oh God, and let your light shine in our lives. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, let your power flow. Let your victory flow. Let your glory flow. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, arise on our behalf. Enough of this uh, virus. Uh, we break the power that is behind it. We break the spirit that is behind it. In the name of Jesus Christ. As John 8.36 said, ah, If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. We are free. We are free to love Jesus. We are free to congregate again. We are free to serve him. Uh, very shortly, very shortly, though it will be seen that you have taken this away. You've grabbed it by your hook. And you drag the dragon away. Who tells the sun where to stand in the morning? Who tells the moon you can only come out at this time? Who tells the sea there's only one place that you can go? No, it is only the Lord. You are the one that sets boundaries. You are the one that gives boundaries. You are the one that says enough is enough. Lord, we say in the name of Jesus, uh, release your power of resurrection uh, over this virus now. Enough is, is, is enough. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you for answered prayers. We bless you. Come on. Just uh, appre appreciate God now. Join me in just thanking God. Just bless the name of the Lord. We bless his name. We lift him high. We lift him high. We glorify him. Take glory, Jesus. Be exalted. Be magnified. What a wonderful God you are. What a mighty God. We exalt and magnify your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Receive all the praise. Receive all the honor in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you glory now. We give you adoration. Thank you. We are so grateful for everything. We thank you for delivering us. We thank you for putting the enemy to shame. We thank you for destroying the works of the enemy. We give you all the glory and all the adoration today. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Apostle Paul took the same night in which he was betrayed. He said uh, that Jesus took the same night in which he was betrayed. He took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. What a great day and a great time to do this in remembrance of him. What a great day and a great time. What a very particular day to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We receive it. We receive it. We receive you. You are our Passover. You are our lamb. Lamb of God that takes away our sins. 
you are the one that has healed us. You are the one that keeps us. The one that keeps Israel, that neither slumbers nor sleep. You are God, our refuge. You are our light and our salvation. And so we receive you this morning and we bless and we praise your holy name in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who showed the moon you can only come this far? And who told the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can capture a falling star? Well, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. All of creation testifies this life within me, Christ. I know my Redeemer lives in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Family, let's share the grace together. Thank you, Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies are following us all the days of our lives, and we are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Family, we love you so much. Have a wonderful Easter. Have a blessed Resurrection Day. And enjoy the glory of the Lord in the power of his resurrection. In Jesus' precious name, amen.